All right, this is going to be part two of the shell method. Um, and if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch part one because it shows you where these two formulas came from. Now, in this part, we'll actually work out a couple of sample problems, but what we'll look at is this. Now, remember our, from the equations from the first video were this. If you're going to take this thing around the x-axis, or horizontal, put everything in terms of y. If you're going to take it around the y-axis, or vertical, then put everything in terms of x. So you really have these two formulas. Remember, you need to find the radius and the height of an individual shell. So we'll look at a couple of examples, and the first one will go around the, uh, the y-axis and put everything in terms of x with vertical shell. Then in the second example, we'll do a horizontal one. So let's take a look at a couple of relatively simple examples to start with. Okay, well, the first example looks like this. You use the shell method to find the volume of revolution of the solid generated by the region bordered by, and you've actually got three things here. y is equal to 2x, y is equal to 0, and x is equal to 2. Now, if you were to graph these lines, they would look something like this. <clears throat> so what you've got would be this. Now, in this thing, um, y is equal to 2x is this slanted line right here. x is equal to 2 is this vertical line right here. And y is equal to 0 is the horizontal line right along the x-axis. So those are your three lines. They border a region that looks like this. Now, in this example, we'll find the volume by uh, rotating this thing around the y-axis, and if you did that, uh, what the solid would look like would be something like this. So if you take this area, uh, roll it around the y-axis, it'll wind up sweeping out a volume that looks like this. Now as you solve these problems, what you're going to want to do is uh, start with the formula, but you're going to have to put an individual shell in there. Now before we get started, let me just go back and remind you of one thing here. What the formula looks like is this. Um, since we're taking this one around the y-axis, we use this lower formula down here. We'll put everything in terms of x. So it's all going to be in terms of x and integrated with respect to x, or dx. So let's see what that's going to look like. So to start with, we'll do the following. Uh, just begin with the formula. Now it looks like this. The volume is 2 pi times the integral of the radius times the height uh, times the thickness of an individual shell. And the secret to these problems is this. You have to actually draw the shell to get the radius and the height. So in this problem, what you're really working on is this. You need to know what is the radius and what is the height, which you've got to put it in terms of x since you're going to integrate from this. So the very first thing to do is draw yourself a shell in there. Now, it doesn't have to be a great work of art, as you'll see. I'm not very good at this either, but I'll actually draw a couple of shells in here. So, what to start with, I'll draw a single rectangle that's oriented vertically. So, it'll look something like this, from here and, say, to about here. So, just start with a single rectangle, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of shade that a little bit. It'll look like this. So, there is a single vertically oriented rectangle. That'll be the edge of the shell. Now, again, don't worry about it being too neat, but go ahead and if you rotated this little rectangle around the axis, it would look something like that. Then on this side, you'd wind up with another edge of this thing. It would look kind of along this line. So, something like this. So here would be the other edge of the shell. Then down the bottom, you can kind of think of it as completing the shell. It would look something like that. So what that is, that is a single shell inside this. Now, if you wanted to, you could kind of give it some thickness here. So there is a single shell. Now, what you need to know is this. You've got to find the radius, and you've got to find the height. So let's go ahead and just put those on there to start with. Now, in this problem, what the radius is, it's the distance from the, shell, from the axis that you're going to rotate around to the edge of the shell. So this distance right here would be r. So you're going to need r. Then you're going to need the height of the shell. And in this problem, what the height of the shell is, is this distance right here. So you need r and you need h. Now again, on this problem, what the radius is, that's just whatever this x distance is. So if you start from here and you go over here, you have gone over a distance x on the x-axis. So the radius is just going to be x. Now for the height of the shell, the height of the shell is whatever the height of that slanted line is, and that is y is equal to 2x. So it's this right here. So since the height is the same thing as y, but y is equal to 
2x, and that's going to give you the height. So the height of this thing will be 2x. So you've got the radius and you've got the height. Now, the next thing you need are the limits of integration. Well, in this problem, you're going to integrate this um, as you go across here, since it's all in terms, I think I'll put it in dx here. What dx is, that's the thickness of this. So the dx is the thickness of this shell. So you're going to integrate it with respect to x. So from a to b, you're going to integrate it from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So that's going to be a, and that's going to be b. So at this point, now that you've got everything set up, now it's just a matter of running through the integral. So let's do that uh, really quickly here. So what you've got is the volume is going to be equal to 2 pi times the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 2. The radius is x, and the height is 2x. And you're going to integrate the whole thing with respect to x. So it turns into a fairly simple integral. Well, what that would be it would be 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2, and multiply these two together, and you'd get 2x squared dx. Okay, now this is a constant 2. You can bring it to the outside, which would give you 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx. We'll find the antiderivative of that, and you would have 4 pi, and then you're going to have x cubed divided by 3, evaluated between 0 and 2, which would give you 4 pi times, and go ahead and plug in the 2, so you'll have 2 cubed divided by 3, and then plug in the 0, you'll have 0 cubed uh, divided by 3. Well, what that's going to give you would be 4 pi times, and this would be 8 thirds, minus 0, which would just be 0 then. Uh, the 4 times 8 would give you 32 pi divided by 3. And what this is going to be, this is actually going to be the answer to the problem. So that is the number of cubic units that you have. Now in this problem, if you put that on a calculator, it would actually turn out to be about 35.5 and cubic, whatever units are supposed that would be inches, maybe cubic inches. But it'll look like this. But anyway, the heart of the problem is this, is make sure if, if you're going around the y-axis, put the whole thing in terms of x. So the hardest part of the problem is determining, okay, what is the radius and what is the height? Once you've got the radius and the height, you can just put it in the integral and evaluate it. And the only way to get that, really, is to draw yourself a picture. And then what I would do is label the radius, and I would label the height, and then put both of them in terms of x. So what that is, that's the first problem, taking it around the, uh, the y-axis. Now let's look at exactly the same problem, but going around the x-axis. And if you did it, it would look something like this. Okay, and again, we'll start with exactly the same thing. Now initially it's going to look exactly the same. What we'll have is... Uh, here are the three straight lines again. That's y is equal to 2x. Uh, the vertical line is x is equal to 2. And the one down here is y is equal to 0. Now, this time, if we revolve it around the x-axis, it'll look something like this. So take it around the x-axis, and it'll look like this, and it'll sweep out this way. Now, again, let's go back and check the formula. If you're going to go around the x-axis, what the formula says, if you're going to take it around the x-axis, put everything in terms of y, so it'll have a differential y. So we'll use this top formula here. So to start with, when you put the formula in, it'll look something like this. So almost the same formula, but this time everything's with respect to this. Now, you've got exactly the same problem on this example that you had in the last one. You need to know what is the radius and what is the height. But this time, you've got to put it all in terms of y. Now, on all these shell problems, the first thing to do is to come in here and draw yourself a single shell. Now, the way to do that, again, is to draw a single horizontal rectangle in here somewhere about the middle of the thing. So I'm going to come in and put mine about, say, right here. So I go from here to here, and uh, I'll sort of shade it in. So there is a single horizontal rectangle. That's going to represent the edge of the shell. 
Now take that rectangle and roll it around the axis, and again, you can be pretty rough on your sketches, so I'm going to roll this thing around the axis, and it will look something like this. So when I roll it around the axis, it does that. Now this end right here would do exactly the same thing, kind of rolls around the axis, looks something like this. Then down here, uh, I'll have the bottom of the shell. So the edge of the shell down here, we'll kind of put it in as something about like this. And again, I'll sort of shade that. So that's what the shell's going to look like. And again, it doesn't have to be anything super accurate, just a rough sketch where you can get it, because what you need are the radius and the height. And again, let's draw a picture of what each one of these two things are. First of all, the radius is the distance from the axis that you're rotating it around to the edge of the shell. So the radius in this case is going to be this right here, from here to here. That's going to be the radius. Now the height is going to be this distance right here. So the height of the thing is going to be from here to here. So all you've got to do is figure out what is the radius and what is the height, but that's not always as easy as what you think. So again, you'll get both of these off the picture. The only way to get this is to get it right off your picture. So first of all, let's get the, uh, the radius. Now what the radius is, that's just whatever the y height is. So in this particular problem, the radius is just going to be equal to y, because that height right there is right along this axis. It's just going to be whatever the y height is, so the radius will be y. Now, to find the height of the thing, to find h, um, you'll have to do that by looking at your picture. Now what you want to know is how long is this little section right in here. So you want to go from here to here and find out how long is that thing. And all you really have to work with is this, is if you started from here and went to the bottom of the shell, that distance right there would be x. So this distance from here to here is x. Now, if you go all the way out to the top of the shell, you'll be at 2, so this distance from here to here would be 2. So if that's the case, then this distance in here, which is the height of the shell, would be just the difference in these two, so it would be 2 minus x. So that is going to be the height. So what you can do is come over here, and the height is going to be 2 minus x. But you've got a problem. Is If you're going to find this integral and integrate it with respect to y, the entire problem has to be in terms of y. So what you have to do is to take this x right here and put it in terms of y. Now how do you do that? Well, you come back over and start with this. If y is equal to 2x, then x would be equal to 1 half of y is equal to x. So you have to do this little conversion right here to put it all in terms of y. So what that's going to give you is this thing right here is going to be equal to 2 minus 1 half of y. And the radius is going to be y. So now you've got the whole thing in terms of y. And the hard part of the problem is done. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the limits on this thing. Uh, you, since it's all in with respect to y, this little thickness of this thing right here is going to be dy. So you're going to integrate it for, with respect to y, you're going to integrate it going this direction here. So you're going to integrate it from y equals 0 to y equals 4. So let's go ahead and set it up and run through the thing. So what this is going to be would be the following. Uh, the volume would be 2 pi times the integral from y equals 0 to y equals 4 of the radius, which is y, times the height, which was 2 minus x, which we changed into 2 minus 1 half y. So that's going to be 2 minus 1 half of y. And the whole thing is dy. So just remember, you're going to do the integral in terms of y. The entire thing has to be in terms of y. You can't have y's and x's combined together. Okay, the next step you'll do is go ahead and distribute this y. So take this y and multiply it times that and times that. And that will give you the following. So the volume would be equal to 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 4. And this is going to be 2y. And then, uh, oops, let's just put a minus here. This is going to be minus uh, 1 
half of y squared dy. So 2 y minus 1 half of y squared dy. Now find the antiderivative of that. <clears throat> well, what that would be, um, the volume would be equal to 2 pi, and then this will turn into, let's scoot this up a little bit, when you find the antiderivative, you would have the following. This is going to be 2, and this will become y squared divided by 2, minus 1 half of y cubed divided by 3. Uh, the whole thing evaluated between 0 and 4. Now you can simplify that a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. The volume would be equal to 2 pi. Uh, and on this, the 2's will cancel out and leave you with y squared minus, and this will become y cubed divided by 2 times 3 would be 6. So between 0 and 4. So uh, that's going to give us the volume would be equal to 2 pi, and go ahead and plug in the 4, so you'll have 4 squared minus 4 cubed divided by 6. And then minus the second one would all be 0. Okay, so what this is going to give you would be equal to uh, 2 pi, this will be the volume, and this will turn out to be 4 squared would be 16 minus uh, 4 cubed, which would be 64 6, which will simplify down to 32 thirds. So this will simplify to 32 thirds. And what that would give you would be 2 pi times, now change both of these into thirds, this will become 48 thirds minus 32 thirds. And then that's going to give you 2 pi times, and this will be 16 thirds, which gets you to 32 pi divided by 3. And that is going to be the final answer. So it just happens to turn out, in this case, to be the same answer. That won't always be the case. But you're following exactly the same process. Just remember, uh, if you're finding it around the x-axis, put the entire thing in terms of y. So here and here. And sometimes it might involve doing this. Uh, if you find it in terms of 2 minus x, like over here you had a 2 minus x, there's nothing wrong with getting it in terms of x to start with, but then just later on you're going to have to take that x and turn it into a y. So once you've got the whole thing in terms of y. Now the only way to get the radius and the height is to actually go ahead and draw one shell in there, and then looking at your picture, you can get all those distances off that shell. So uh, there's a couple of examples of the shell method, um, one around the y-axis and one around the x-axis. And one last thing, just remember, uh, if you're going to go around the x-axis or horizontal, put everything in terms of y. If you're going to go around the y-axis or vertical, put everything in terms of x. So there's a couple of shell method examples, and we'll take a look at a couple more in some other videos.